Hello, my name is Daniel, and I'm down bad waiting for Dragon's Dogma 2 to be released. I've already scheduled the days off work and pre-ordered that bad boy. I need something to help me cope with the wait. So, despite concluding my last guide on the premise that I will not be making another one, here is another guide on Kenshi dedicated to base building. If you feel lied to and confused, then you should see the look on your lied to and confused face. But please, allow me to begin my redemption arc one of many to come, by showing you how to get a base running and running effectively, and enjoyably even. If you're still buying food from town like a chump, or struggling to get walls to face the right way, or trying to connect those pesky gates properly and keeping those gates from getting destroyed and pillaged by 20 count bandit raids, then we're gonna fix that. And if you already have a base, you may learn how to improve it in a few clever ways shown in the video. To be honest, base building is kind of a mid-game endeavor at best depending on where you decide to put it. And in some cases, it's more like an end-game plus challenge for psychopaths, but it doesn't have to be. If you want to learn how to make your own materials rather than buying them from towns, create enough food to have a surplus to spare, and even make arms and armors fit for the wealthiest of armies, and most importantly, keep your base from getting absolutely ransacked well, then look no farther. Most likely, if you're watching this, you probably started a base somewhere and a few days later you had some nice gentlemen show up and just c completely ruin all your hard work. So you know the most important part of building a base is keeping control of it. What's the point in making a badass super pimp pad if you can't keep gangs of dumb losers from taking your hard work as soon as you get a good thing going? This guide here I have haphazardly constructed will be starting from the very beginning of putting a base down, a little bit before, and we'll be complementing the first part of the guide I made here. But will work for pretty much anyone interested in getting a better grip on what comes after putting a shack down. I should also say this will be a true and honest guide like the last one. Many of the exploits and more dubious methods will not be applied here because I think the word tutorial draws those who are inexperienced and still in the learning process of understanding this game, and I would never rob you of that by showing you the easy way and ruining the best part of learning this game. So there is a lot of preparation that can help us in getting a base down before we even put a single structure down. But before we do any of that, we need at least one or probably two good fighters at the very least. Trust me, you don't want to be out there when the fighting starts without any real fighters. So, following the last part of my video, we need someone that can whoop some fucking ass when the ass comes to our doorstep, because anywhere worth building has someone ready to fight you for it. Before we even think about building anything anywhere, we need people we can rely on to help protect our home from trouble when it inevitably comes knocking. So I'm in Squin here with my dudes, I'm looking to build a base of my own, but before I do that, I'm gonna shoot for at least two fighters and I'll show you my little process here for training up a fighter effectively and pretty quickly without cheesing the game. So like the end of the last video, we're gonna get our fighters some decent armor and the weakest weapon we can get our hands on. I'll assume you have the ability to get money for these and can afford all future expenditures because there will be a lot of money we need to spend. If not, well, I do have that first video that I made that shows you how to literally print money with little to no input. So with some good armor, a poor quality weapon, medical supplies, and definitely bedrolls, and food probably, we're gonna head out to Skinner's room and level up our fighting to something respectable. That's where we go in bag. So, I'll go in depth here, but this is really easy. 
The idea here is, these hungry ass looking bandits don't do anything other than take whatever food is in your inventory when they knock you down. Which is pretty easy to avoid if you know this information beforehand. <laughs> they also have weak blunt weapons, so the chance of getting your limbs bonked off and decent armor is next to none unless you really, really push it. They also come in huge groups, which is good. We're gonna find a big ol' starving brood of them and start battling with one of our characters and have the other one wait on the sideline, ready to carry them to the bedroll when they get big sleeped. Yeah, you ain't winning this fight. Or the next 10, but that's okay. We're not trying to win just yet. As soon as you get knocked out, what we wanna do is get up the second it lets us stand up. When you spam in the, the move key, while the bandits are still nearby, as the closer the better. Every time you do this, you will get toughness experience in boatloads, because every time you stand up near an enemy, it gives you XP for each enemy next to you. And by doing this a lot, we'll start to land hits, and it might even look like we might win a few of these fights after a while. But just by doing this for like an hour, your characters are gonna get mean as hell. And ready to protect your base next time someone shows up ready to brawl, you will be too. Also, a really good tip while you're hunting for groups of hungry bandits and you're not seeing very many, you can turn up the global population multiplier up to 2 and it should help a lot. But if you put it all the way up to like 4 it could get laggy because it will spawn a ton of dudes. I kinda go over it in my first video. And remember to turn it back down when you're done out here or, or you'll have a lot of guys chasing you when you try and run back to Squin. But after about an hour and a half of running around assaulting the homeless, I'm about at 30ish for both attack and offense, with an end game level of toughness of course. So with two people with these stats, we will be looking pretty good in the combat department, and for basic base defense. But if you're having fun out here, feel free to stay as long as you're willing to, or even train up another guy or two to help pitch in when the fighting breaks out. For now, I'm just gonna stick with Snip, Snop, and Julian here. And yes, I made him in the image of Julian from Trailer Park Boys. Julian! With that, it's time to head back to town and get those base preparations ready. Now we are back home, for me it is Squin, the most common starting place and where I originally started all those years too even. Here I have already bought a house and therefore have a place of research and a reliable income so this is kind of ideal for what I'm going to be showing you. First off I'm probably going to go buy some real weapons for these two so when we get out there we can fight off threats easier when we get our base put down. Just pick whatever looks cool to you for now. It's also probably just going to be a long cleaver or a plank if you're going to buy it from Squin. But sometimes they also sell cool weapons all the way over at the bar in the hub if you want to check over there too. Also keep in mind, characters can benefit from learning a single weapon type really well, so sticking with one can be very beneficial to your damage numbers in the long run. But for now, we have a lot of resources to stockpile a whole workforce of people to recruit, a metric ton of food to stockpile, and a lot of researching to do. What I'm trying to say is most of building a base comes way before you construct a single building. This is where that money comes in I was talking to you about earlier. In short, I hope you're not broke, because there ain't no welfare checks in can't you? You better learn how to hustle, how to grind, how to scam even. But we already have an infinite money generator running thankfully so that shouldn't be a problem for us. So we'll start with researching. For this you need a house in town and the corresponding materials of course, which are also sold in town and even nearby as well. Pretty easy. After you get the house and make the first bench, pick your smartest looking person and assign them to the research bench. Later on you will need to build a bigger bench to continue researching. Keep in mind from there you can also just hit the upgrade on it once you make the bigger version to save on materials and from placing another one down. But for now, we need a lot of books. Fear not. 
they sell the books in town too. At the travel shop, which is the Tower and Squin, and the general goods stores will also have a few books for you to buy. You see, we want to do our researching here in town and get ahead of the game before we get out there. And if all goes well, we'll even have the ability to start growing food and raising our farming skills right away so we can stop buying food from town as soon as possible. This is a very, very nice perk of having a base, and there are many more as you will come to see later on. So yeah, the research part is pretty easy. Everything just requires books and for you to build the better research bench at tier 2. And I think you can only go to like tier 3 with the regular books anyway, so there won't be a ton to research, it'll just take a minute. Oh yeah, and with getting the farming research, they also require two of the uh, crop type that you want to learn to grow with the books as well. Our only option here is going to be growing wheat straw for food. And we want to grow hemp as well since it plays a large part in armor production later on. They sell the raw plants we need at the general stores like the one next door to me so that'll be pretty easy to get. And that's pretty much all the info on researching, just make sure to unlock everything you can before leaving the safety of the town. Good morning, my honey bunch, sugar plum, pumpy, umpy, umpkin, sweetie pie, cuppy cake, gumdrops, nookum bookums. I just finished peeling these bananas for the pancakes. I'll clean these banana peels up later. But now while we wait for all this researching to get done and the learning to get learned, we have a grocery list we need to fill and be able to transport to our new base site all the way from the town. All of this stuff can be bought at any general goods store next to you. They're gonna get sick and tired of us running through that fucking store by the end of this. I also suggest getting a lot of trader backpacks for about everyone you could buy one for. You're going to want them. But anyway, here is that shopping list we need filled. Piptin Eindron Plades. This is for production of our own building materials and iron plates, as well as some storage boxes we're definitely gonna want. 10 building materials. This is for that stone mine and maybe some other storage things that want building materials. And for torches so we can work faster at night. Twonchi Wotstri. This will net us two wheat straw farms. Twongi Hamb. This will net us about two small hemp farms. Seishtin Fobrich. 16 of these will allow us to build exactly 4 beds so we can let our guys rest and recover faster. But this is really optional. But keep in mind, healing takes ages, even in beds. They can be a good idea because it will be a long time before we can make them ourselves without having to buy it anyway. But this is about the minimum amount of materials we need to get a strong start going when we get to our spot. This covers all the essentials of getting a base started. It might take a few days to gather all these materials, but every day or day and a half, the shop should refresh their items so you can buy more. There's also the way station near Squin that you can buy even more materials from if you want to buy a surplus or you're just trying to get them quickly. We got the research going, we're looking out for the materials we need. Next, we need as many working hands as we can pay for. If there is anyone in Squin you have not recruited, go ahead and buy them. We need farmers. We need haulers, we need researchers, we need miners for both stone and iron, we need processor operators for both stone and iron, we need plate beaters, a future armor smith, a future weapon smith, all of the, those might come later because we will probably want two scorch landers for that. We need a lot of dudes. Hire everyone you can. From the way station, from Squin, from even the hub. If you can find a crackhead there, convince them to come home with you. I can't give you an exact number of how many people to get, but just recruit everyone you can. There's no such thing as too many people as long as you can feed them. But speaking of feeding all these people, there's no easy way to say this, but we need a lot of fucking food, and it's gonna cost probably a lot. Starvation is a guarantee when we start a base. At least it is for me anyway, and if you're following a guide I made, well, there's gonna be a little bit of starvation. It's gonna be a while before we can get a sizable amount of wheat straw grown, but I'll show you that later when we get there. It's a little bit of a process to get food making. Basically, while you're researching and buying all those other materials, you also want to start to clean out the two bars in town for all the food they have. About 
as many times as you can afford. The more food, the better. Just, I don't have an exact amount of food, but the more food you buy, the longer you can stay without having to run all the way back to town to buy more. It isn't the end of the world if we start starving, but the more we stockpile now, the the more we, uh, we are not going to be starving later. So don't be surprised if we need to run down and fill up another backpack again at some point. But yeah, clear out the bars. I'm talking the dried meat. I'm talking the dried fish. I'm talking those meat wrap things that I like to think are just kind of sandwiches, basically, since it's meat and bread. And, uh, hmm. You know, all this food talk is getting me pretty hungry, so I'm going to take a break here and probably go eat something myself. You see, I've had something I've been looking forward to that I bought some time ago, and I think it's finally time. Come here, I'll show you. These? These, my friends, are Dr. Pepper beans. I saw these and wondered if they could truly provide a sumptuous repast to sate my growing hunger and also somehow carry the same refreshing properties that Dr. Pepper is known globally for at the same time. And while cooking these in this pot, I began to feel at peace, like when a good friend comes to visit you when you feel ill. And that's when I realized just cooking them seemed to have cured something in me deep inside. These Dr. Pepper beans were my friend and my cure. After I eat them, I will be complete again. And after eating these, I gotta say, they're pretty alright. They they lean heavily on the sweet side, and I'm, I'm not super big on sweet things, but I'll, I'll be damned. They do taste like Dr. Pepper, just a more... A more sinister, sweeter, savory kind of Dr. Pepper. It's almost like candy, I want to say, but uh, I'll just stop the derailment of this guide here with these Dr. Pepper beans review I've prepared, and we'll get back to the base building. All right, all right about 18 minutes into an. Let me fix this. All right, about 18 minutes into a base building guide, we are almost ready to set off and build an actual base. If you're still watching, thank you for coming along this journey with me, especially if you're coming from the first video I made. I really hope this is doing something positive for your Kenshi experience, and if not, it is at least mildly entertaining. Before we go, let's do one last check on everything we need first, because we're about to roll out. Let me show you something really convenient that will help you forever first. If you still have all your mining guys still assigned to the mining jobs, and you want to clear that job, typically your first instinct is select the character, move your mouse all the way over to the jobs, and then hit cancel on the job. If you have to do this more than once, it starts to suck. A lot. Let me show you the galaxy brain way. If you go into your controls, scroll about halfway down and find these two options. Select next and previous character. These are the buttons we want to use from now on when we want to cancel jobs. Now instead of doing it the hard way, look at how fast I can clear these jobs now by using the select character keys to cycle through them back and forth. This changed my life forever, and I thought you should know. Go ahead and make sure you have all your materials loaded into your workers. Preferably in trader backpacks, but you can throw them in their inventories in a pinch. And we want to make sure our food supply is looking pretty healthy. Grab all of it, we need it for the journey. And if you notice your guys are putting items away when you want to keep them in their inventory, like the food here, you can see them putting it back into the food storage barrel after I grab it. You can disable the job tab over here on the side to prevent this from happening. This is the ditch resource mechanic in play which acts as an auto haul for each character. It makes base building much easier and I'd strongly suggest leaving this on always. Also one last food run wouldn't hurt at this point if you still have the money too. If you have anyone who does not have medic as their first job and medical supplies in their inventory, now would be the perfect time to fix this. Medic on everyone and medical supplies on everyone, always, no matter what. And don't forget to empty your research bench of leftover books and other things you may have stashed there. We can leave the house and everything else that's still here. It's still an asset we can use at any time. But other than that, looks like it's finally time to go and build that base. With everyone gathered, we are set to travel to a promising base site I've picked out. It's not too far from town, so this will be the perfect place for you to get comfortable with base management. The spot we are going to is right here on the map. 
just a respectable jog away from Squin. Go ahead and select everyone and make sure they're at the same travel speed and away we go. I'll see you there. Alright, here we are. We are ready to build a base and we are well prepared. We have the materials, plenty of helping hands, and a decent spot with everything we need, which is a rare luxury. We will go over the only major downside here later, but let's quickly look over the major upsides this spot has to offer us before we get to work. First off, we have both major natural resources here. They are over here in this area, which are both iron and copper. Both being of acceptable quality too, meaning almost nothing is out of reach production wise for us already. And on top of that, the land here is suitable for farming two useful crops, wheat straw and hemp. Hemp, I should mention, can get you in hot water with the local factions, but not the one next to us. Our good pals of the shack care not for such things. Next up is stone availability. Let's take a look, shall we? If we open the building menu and we go down to the mining tab, we should find the stone mine. When we select it, go ahead and cycle through these arrows right here and just build the first and cheapest version for now. When we go to place us, it will tell us the richness of the stone. This requires a little bit of fishing around to get the highest percentage. The higher the percentage, the faster yields it offers, so it's usually in our best interest to get it as close to 100% as we can. So let's see here. Uh, looking good, but I think it can go higher. Let's go over here a little bit. Oh, and would you look at that? It's at 100%, but why is it all blue? Well, when you try and place it, it seems we're too close to the very town we just cinematically crawled out of. This is to stop you from building right next to established towns and other in-game structures. But, let me show you how to easily circumvent this issue. When you place down any structure that counts towards building a base in this game, certain things like stone mines and buildings, the game tags that spot where you put the structure as a player owned outpost, and it gives you this big circular area around it as yours. This is shown on the map as a blue icon as well after you place it. Be aware, this also means you are a candidate for bandit raids and town events, which we'll go over later. So since this is out of reach, so what happens if I build, say, a food storage barrel right at the edge here where it kind of turns blue? Well, let's see. After building it, if we try and place the stone mine again, we can suddenly build closer to the town. Isn't that neat? So, if we go to place that stone mine, we have access to it and the 100% richness it has to offer, and it's no longer blue. This is because we've overwritten the edge of the town with our own base by placing a structure. Now, this won't let you build really close to town, but you can build closer to towns than intended with this trick. Just in case in the future any of those pesky town or camp borders encroach on your magnificent base site, you can get a little more leeway by building closer to them. Next up, if we open the farming tab and try and put down a small wheat farm, we will see the fertility and the crop yield is pretty sufficient, and the same goes for hemp. But we can probably wait on placing these somewhere until we get our base layout more established and we can put them somewhere better. And the last thing we want to check on is our power situation. We have two options for power in this game. One is easy, and the other kind is kind of a big pain in the ass that needs some setup to get going. These are wind turbines and generators, respectively. Generators being the more effort endeavor for power needs, it requires you to break down crops, most efficiently hemp of course, that is turned into fuel, which is then loaded into a generator. 
That said, the wind turbines, which after you build them produce free power forever, so long as the wind is blowing hard enough, they may fluctuate their power output here and there, or stop completely depending on the area you live at. You can combat this by building a sickening amount of them, or, by maybe the wiser choice, building battery banks to store power for these wind droughts that can happen. So, with all that relevant information reviewed, it all sounds good, right? What's the major downside I was talking about earlier? Well, it's the Shek Kingdom and the city we live so close to, actually. Living near or in the territory of any of the major three factions will have large influences on how you operate because they will visit your base and they all want something. The closer you live to one of their bases, the more you will see of them. For example, the Holy Nation wants a human male with a holy flame and some prayer time on every prayer day. This is the easiest if you're keen to abide by the way of Akron. The United Cities want taxes, and a lot of them, and they come armed to the teeth each time they come to collect. And don't let them catch you growing hemp, you don't want to visit from Igor. And the Sheik. They want all your food. They don't have farms, and now you know how they get all their food in their bars. You will find living in their territory has the downside of the Shrek tribute event, where each time they stop by and they strip all the food out of your base each time. This can also spiral out of control depending on how you handle it, but don't worry, I'll show you an easy way to avoid this event later, and to keep them from coming back for blood rather than food. With all that, I think we can start building. I'll show you the order in which to use all this junk we brought to get the most out of it, so try not to stray from it or you may find yourself running out of materials and needing to run back to town to replace them. But after this, we will be able to produce an infinite amount of them afterwards so you can build whatever you want. So let's start by making our own building materials and come back to that stone mine we made at 100% earlier. First off, I'd say let's give everyone the engineer job by selecting everyone and shift clicking the stone mine blueprint. They'll get the engineer job and they'll automatically build whatever needs to be built. They'll even get the materials to do so by themselves. So this will help us get everything built faster going forward. Also, let's enable everyone's jobs too if we haven't already. This should make our guys go and construct the mine and dump all the food we brought into the food store we built earlier. So no one gets hungry. So we have the stone mine built. Now we need the manual stone processor. Go ahead and cycle to it in this menu right here. It's the cheapest one we can make. Go ahead and place it somewhere close to the actual stone mine. This eliminates travel time, one of the easiest ways to make a more productive base. After that is built, we want to make sure we have somewhere to put these new homemade building materials we're pumping out. So that's what the building material storage is for. I like to put mine kinda at the end of the processor here, but wherever you put yours, try and keep it close to the operation, it'll speed things up. And now the last thing we want to do here is place a standing torch near the processor and the mine so we can work at full speed at night. Keep in mind that everything is slower in the dark unless there's a light source nearby. But now we have the mine, the processor, the storage, and the torches. We have access to infinite building materials just like that. After we assign the workers to them, that is. Just the mine and the processor at the level they're at right now need six people in total to run at max efficiency. <laughs> see, why, see why I said you needed so many people now? Don't worry. Later on we can make better versions of these that require a lot less workers, but that'll have to wait for now. Now we need to get some iron plates going as well, and it's the same exact process, but we don't need to build a mine like we did with the stone, because we can't. We do have two iron nodes kind of over here though, so we can skip straight to building that processor. And then the iron plate storage, and hey, look at that, we're already done. If you're finding yourself short on workers, you can also have the miners work both the mine and the processor. Set them to mine and then work the processor and that will help them work more efficiently. But now going forward, we're, we're already pretty self-sufficient in much of the building requirements of this game. Most things just need some amount of building materials or iron plates. But not all things are that simple. Some are a little bit trickier. Like the next thing we need to build. Windmills. It's time to get some power going in this godforsaken dump, and for that, we need a lot of iron plates and some copper. Just the raw copper for now, thankfully. 
and we do seem to have a really good node right over here, kinda next to the stone mine. So with two workers, we can get what we need pretty quick. I'd put a torch and a copper storage next to this node, and that's about all you need for max efficiency for now. We, we don't even need a processor, just mine it and dump it in the box. It's even easier than the iron setup. So for those windmills, let's try and make three of them for now. And if we need more power, we'll just throw more of them up. Uh oh, bandit raid time. So thankfully we came ready to put up a fight. If we open the map here and zoom in a little bit, we can actually take a little look here and see that there is a red blip moving towards our home. That ain't good. And if you move over to the faction tab over here next to the map, we can see that all the raid events and reinforcements we are expecting. By who and the name of the event. What the hell? <laughs> There's hungry bandits. <laughs> Dude, we destroyed those guys, Jesus. Alright, so, let's see what happens when these sorry fools actually get here. Get out here, you sniveling bastards. Oi, chumps. It's time to pay the price. I'm giving you a final chance to come out of this... Victory. We beat those losers. That's fair combat. We won fair and square. The true Kenshi experience in all its glory. Everyone is pretty much healing each other instantly since we all have medic and they go straight back to work more or less. But not all encounters can be won as easily through violence as we will see later. But now let's just focus on finishing those windmills. Alright, with three windmills running, I think that's enough power for us to start improving our production. Next, we are going to be spending materials to get materials faster with less workers by upgrading our stuff. Which is probably going to cost a lot of iron plates. I would suggest upgrading the iron plate processor first. Or, actually, this thing is called a refinery, I should say. But it's a little bit weird. We can't just hit the upgrade button on this manual iron one like we can the manual stone processor. So with the refinery here, we actually have to build the new powered one. After the iron plate one is upgraded, I'd get the building materials one upgraded next. And for that, we can just hit that upgrade button on it from the manual one so it's easier and cheaper. But now we also have the option of upgrading the stone mine itself, that pile of rocks. So, after that, we should have a lot of free workers available with all these improvements. Now, with power aiding our production, we're looking good. I'd say it's time to start drawing out something impressive. But before that, one last quick tip. You see over here in the corner? Go ahead and enable the open to public option. You'll get visitors and, in other words, you can also get free help from the guys just visiting your base with that enabled. So next time there's some merchants hanging around, uh, maybe a little pitch in when you're getting raided, I don't know. <clears throat> but now this next segment is just what I'm building. Feel free to build this however you want. I'm probably gonna get a little bit crazy with it, but I'll explain everything as I go so you can follow along freeform style. But, honestly, I don't even care if you copy this base I make pixel by pixel. It might be really cool and you might go, hey, I'd like to live in that. Just go right ahead. Last few bases I've made actually have been without walls. And I also rarely use harpoons for defense because of the way I typically play. But I'll show you how to get walls looking good. But maybe not so much how to use harpoons in this video. The first thing we want to put down is our gates. This helps with wall placement a ton, but if I'm being honest, gates are kind of more base dressing than actual defense, but there are ways to use them to your advantage. You will see raids open your gates in under 20 seconds even with the highest level ones, so they are kind of a mixed practicality depending on what you're planning on using them for, but 
I still think they look pretty cool, so I'm going to be building them today anyway. So my first gate will go right here on the road there. But before we place it, look. The raids will stand in the direction this blue arrow is pointing, usually at the outermost gate you have. This is the outside of the gate. This is really important to make sure this is facing on the outside of your base. It will also be the same deal with walls. Look where the arrow is pointing when you are building them. They should snap to the gates so this is easier later on. So since we have to do gates first, I'm gonna go place all these others next. I'm gonna kind of work with the road here I think and kind of make it a divider in my base. I've built something kind of similar before. So after all my gates are done, it's time for the walls. Now it's important to start drawing these walls from your gates. Provided you place the gates facing the right way earlier, it will help make sure that they are facing the right way as well. And they should connect pretty easy for you. And there you go, good looking walls. You can kind of fiddle with them if you uh, right click it. You can kind of redraw them from a certain spot. But yeah, I think we're looking pretty good and good lord what is that? What you just witnessed was a certified Black Dragon Ninja Raid. Now feel free to type get black loser in the comments. These guys mean business as you just saw. They are bastards through and through. Not only do they use swarm tactics to overwhelm your defenses, these clowns and the circus they bring to your base start their act by running past all your guys and all your defenses straight to your food store just to empty it. So yeah, they are pretty infamous for new players. They're pretty infamous for old players, honestly. Because they are one hell of a jump up from the dust bandits we thrashed the shit out of not too long ago. You're gonna have a rough time putting up a real fight against these washed up freaking poser ninjas. And even then, if you can, they're still gonna make it to that food storage. And they're still gonna empty it. And you're still gonna sit there and pick it out of all their little fucking inventories. Which sucks really bad. So how do you deal with this? Well, our first and easier option is to swallow our pride and take a short vacation from the base every time we see the raid. The easiest thing to do is to kind of empty all our food with us, wait outside the base and kind of wait for him to leave. It's a temporary solution for a long term problem, but thankfully they won't take over your base and well, you can't win every fight in this game starting out unless you grind like crazy. Or, on the other hand, we can take the fight to them and stop this madness permanently. But the large numbers they bring each time might suggest they have a large city of some sort nearby. Maybe some real established infrastructure to support that many men for each raid. These idiots live in a dingy fucking tower in the hills nearby. You could just go over there and murder these thumb-sucking bozos and do everyone with a pulse a favor by unaliving them. There are less guys in this tower than there are in a single raid they launch. I'd say a decent suggestion is to train up, bring everyone over there, and, and kind of see how it goes. If you get your, your cheeks clapped really bad, well, uh, maybe reload and think about training up some more workers into fighters or something like that. I'll just kind of leave this hill for you to climb. It's part of the part of the Kenji experience. Since we're on the topic here, and this is the last type of raid you should see here, remember how I told you about the Sheck and all that tribute business I was talking about? Well, there is a laughably easy way to avoid that and stop them from just taking all your food. Also, if you choose to fight them, good luck. That They get serious real fast, and they want you to give them a show. But anyway, these guys show up, and the agreement is they take all your food, and they don't raise your little hamlet with the force of a hundred trained killers. Unless you're allied. 
But yeah, pretty sweet deal, I think, because uh, there's also nothing stopping us from walking over to our food storage and kind of just holding it in our pocket until they leave. Literally, that's all you have to do. Just have someone hold on to it for a second with one of your guys and just wait for him to leave and boom, put it back. Oh, wait, shit. That, that was too early. Hang on. Okay, now we can put it back. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Never mind. All right, last time. Oh, my God. They can fucking smell it from far away or something. I love this goofy ass game. Alright guys, same time next week. Alright, now that you know what your visits are gonna be like, let's get that base built finally. Let me just finish my walls here. Alright, with the walls finished, we're ready to get some facilities going, and the first one we want to make is an easy one. A place of resting and healing so we can get back to working and fighting faster. And we don't have to worry about our guys laying on the ground outside. You can make this out of any building you want. I'm gonna make mine a barracks out of this big old bug house building here. Oh, that's cool. I love it when free fighting experience comes to me. After that is placed, we can make some beds if you brought those fabrics I recommended earlier. Or, alternatively, you can use sleeping bags as well. I'm using a mix of both here. Now, if you want to make sure your guys are resting up when they're hurt, go to the AI tab here and make sure the sleep when injured is checked. They will find a bed at some point automatically and start healing. A very, very convenient thing to have in a base. Now the next thing we want to set up is that farm finally. This has a lot of moving parts, but is well worth the setup, trust me. We will categorize this section into two parts, growing and production. So let's start with the growing. So now, since I have all my walls made here, I think I know where I will put my farms. Right over here. So the first thing we want to put down is two wheat straw farms and two small hemp farms. We should have the materials for these. These are also easy to upgrade, and the large ones don't take up any more room than the small ones, so don't worry about placing them too much. Now that we have those farms placed, we need to water this shit, because of course we do. But thankfully, the water here is pretty good, and we have nice powered wells by now, so we won't need workers to work them, so life will be easier for our farmers. Also, if you're running out of power right about now, it might be time to make more of those wind turbines. I have about nine built at this point, I think. But with the wells made and the farms placed, much like the plates and the building materials we were making earlier, we need workers for them. We want to assign some farmers to these farms and, well, pretty much wait. Also, being a farmer is a very dedicated job. Regular laborers can be thrown about on many different jobs and perform just as well. But a few good farmers will get you more out of your harvest and do so faster. So keep that in mind when managing your workforce. Also, we need to store this stuff when it grows. For now, I would just make about two or three barrels for the hemp and wheat straw each. Now, we don't want to start making food just yet. We want to grow our new fields nice and big, then start making food. We want to focus on upgrading here. This is a time investment now, but later we will be eating like kings because of it. We just need to wait for them to fill the barrels with crops and then hit the upgrade button on these farms when you have enough stored. But other than that, this is pretty much the growing part all set up and ready to go. We just gotta wait for these farms to get fully upgraded. So now I'm going to show you the production part and how to set all that up so we can start turning these plants into something useful, like food and fabrics. We want to build a farmhouse to keep things organized, so I'd say pick any building you like for it. I'd pick a big one because there's going to be a lot happening in here. I'm going to put mine somewhat close to the farm itself, right here. So with a steady supply of wheat straw and hemp, let's get on turning that hemp into something useful first. And for that, we just need the hemp fabric loom. All you need to do is build one of these and now all that hemp is useful. But after you assign someone to operate it, you will now have self-sustained fabrics. Very, very useful. There are a few more uses for hemp, but 
I'll leave you to figure those out by yourself. Hemp is done for now, but the wheat straw on the other hand is another monster to set up. <laughs> Once you learn how to set this up, you'll be able to set up anything. So now it's time to get some food cooking in this bitch. Bread, baby. If it was good enough for the Romans and the Egyptians, it it's gonna be good enough for us. Well, let's get to bacon. First off, we have to grind some more. The wheat straw, that is. And for that, we need to make grain silos to make this shit edible. It takes an absurd 10 raw wheat straw to make one straw flour, which equals one bread, for reference. But after we get the grain silos going and we have some wheat straw on our hands, the final step is to break this shit at the bread oven, and we are done. We also want to build a straw flour storage near the oven too. This is pretty critical for the baker. And finally, a bread basket or two to store the finished bread. You're pretty much set up. And that's infinite food and fabrics. We're on our way to rule the fucking world basically, but now? What's an army that has bread, but no butter? The butter being homemade weapons and armor. This is the main reason for making a base. All of this other stuff we've done is just a foundation for a fortress that pumps out weapons and armor fit for a king. But this is a long and arduous task, and this goes hand in hand with the artifact hunting part of the game, and is kind of hard to go into without spoiling the wonders of the world that lies beyond our walls. Most of these artifacts we need are hidden well. As you were researching in Squin before we headed out here in the boonies and started setting up a fortress, you probably saw the requirements for some of the tech we couldn't unlock calling for ancient science books and engineering research too. We need one of these engineering researchers to unlock the plate beating station, but you ain't buying it from just any town, and there's only a few places you can find them at, but it's all RNG from what you can find when you get to them. But we want to start armor production, and to do that we at least need one engineering research. To help you accomplish this, I'm going to spoil two locations where you can find them, and give you two good options to go about getting it. Option 1, the scrap house. This is the mother of all shops. They sell the best of the best and the coolest shit at any given moment, but you better bring some serious cats. They're located in the heart of the continent of Kenshi. The Deadlands, and all you have to do is run over there with the money, so you won't have to fight anyone per se, but you're gonna want to move fast. Next option, the Workshop Complex. If you're confident in your fighting force and don't mind hiking all of your fighters out on a little expedition, you can almost, almost guaranteed find an engineering research at this Workshop Complex located here on the map. Within its grid-like landmass, there's multiple of these hangar-type buildings around, and they have a lot of things to break into. That said, you probably want to bring a skilled lock picker or some tools to break into the more stubborn locks you can't just pick open. But it's not too far from our base, but you may need to fight some wildlife and lowlifes to and fro from this location, so go prepared. Between these two options, you have a pretty good chance to find at least one engineering research. I actually found one at both of them for research purposes for the video, so good luck. Assuming you got the engineering research, we can throw it in the bench here and begin to learn how to make armor, but it won't be worth a damn. And to make anything fancy like samurai armor ourselves, we need to find and buy the blueprints from armorsmiths to do so, but they are out there. Just in different towns if you want to go out there and take a look. After we get the plate beating stations down and storage for the armored plates we'll be making out of them, all we need is a heavy armor smithy to be made and we're pretty much ready to start making armor. But how do we get decent armor made? Well we might need some more artifacts to get the better heavy armor station, but the main thing you want is someone making armor plates all day long and all night long and nothing else. Also, if you can find a Scorchlander to be this person, they're the guys with the yellow eyes and dark skin. They also have a nice racial bonus towards making armor and weapons. You see this armor skill over here? It's gonna take a lot of work to get this number high enough. And the easiest way to do so is to tell someone to work at this plate beating station and forget they exist for a few weeks. And before you know it, 
they'll be capable of making something worth wearing. And it's pretty much the same deal with weapons. Have someone make infinite weapons, make a weapon cabinet to dump them in, and leave them to it for a few weeks. But to make the good ones, keep in mind you'll also need a ton of artifacts to make the better weapon grade, so they have a high cost to pay to get to that level, but yeah, that's about it. You're ready to continue on without me. You have a base, food growing, artifacts to collect, some black dragon bastards to destroy, and the Shek to deal with, and a whole world to explore. I tried to leave a few goals on the back burner for you to complete after you're done watching this video, and from there I think you can figure out what the rest of this game will be, for real this time. I hope this has been a good foot in the door to the amazing wasteland that is Kenshi.